PR and Corporation uh, based in New York. Hi, Dawa, are you there? Yes, hi, how are you? I'm doing good, great to see you again. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm honored to be here. Pleasure, it's an honor that you join us. Uh, without wasting more time, I would let you take over and uh, ask you to start with your wonderful talk. Thank you so much. Yes, so I'm just going to continue and share my screen. Great. Um, I'm joining you this morning from outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, in the United States, so it's just under 5 a.m., but uh, wonderful to be here. I'm here to talk to you about introducing cultural intelligence to AI, and it's very relevant with where the last speaker, who was really engaging, left off. Uh, the idea is that the future of artificial intelligence is going to require us, uh, especially testers, to be at the front lines of making products and solutions uh, more personalized and user-friendly. So it's a daunting task, but I think that, um, especially now, given the pandemic, the fact that we had to pause a little bit and think more strategically uh, for the future of AI solutions and products to be more culturally relevant, they really need to have um, the element of culture in them. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Uh, so I'm going to do about a five minute introduction and then I'll talk about the case for intelligence in uh, regarding culture and then the role of testers and technologists and uh, some work that we're doing around cultural AI. So cultural relevancy needs to be a two-way street for AI products and solutions to speak to the global public. Um, I'll speak to you in a moment about a challenge, a data set challenge that we're doing with Top Coder. And one of the things right now that we're considering is whether we want to uh, take uh, um, ideas that come in different languages as part of the challenge. Because obviously for natural language processing, it's important for us to be able to test in different languages. But then that's also daunting because do the judges in these challenges all speak different languages? It's really important to think about this. And uh, AP, who's one of the speakers at this conference, um, she is a good friend of mine. I met her a year ago in New York. She's the manager for bioinformatics software at Garden Health in San Francisco. And she said, someday my great, great granddaughter will ask Google, why do Indians wear a red dot on their forehead? So imagine Alexa or Siri, a child asking uh, the conversational AI this question. And AP says, I want the answer to be truly reflective of her ancestry and include the emotions that I would feel in answering that question rather than the one size fits all answer that is it's common practice to do so. So my background is I was a journalist at NPR News in Washington for over 20 years. Later, I was deputy director of the White House Presidential Innovation Fellowship Program. Uh, throughout my career, I have traveled all over the world. I have been a good listener to understand what it is that um, countries around the world are interested in regarding innovation. And so when I came together to um, one of my journeys was in Hong Kong as managing editor of a robot, and her name is Sophia the robot. And so I helped build her AI. I helped uh, design the writing team that helped her understand. Uh, Sophia travels to 30 different countries, and that means that she needs to know what their festivals are, what their traditions are, in order for her to seem um, like she's connecting with the public, right? So even a robot, even a machine, needs to understand cultural context. So this is our team. Uh, IVAL stands for Intelligent Voices of Wisdom. And this is in Geneva at the AI for Good Summit in 2019. Uh, it's our team along with AI scholars as well as storytellers from the South Pacific. And so when I was a journalist at NPR, as I looked at the future of automation, I realized that many of the um, concerns that we have in public broadcasting around lack of diversity are going to actually be more uh, problematic in the age of automation. So I created uh, IVAO, Intelligent Voices of Wisdom, to start beginning the context of bringing culture to AI. So what we do is use AI to search for, identify, classify, and promote all possible cultures from the past, present, and future. Use AI to maintain a culture graph on a real-time basis based on changing external points and human input and making cultural AI easily available to both human and machine audiences. Uh, this is, of course, a daunting task. Um, we have different advisors and partners. So Kiwi Tech is one of our partners uh, helping us build our technology, and they're based in New Delhi. So we're honored to be working with them. 
So um, one of our advisors, his name is Wolfgang Victor Yarlett, and he's an AI researcher at Florida International University, but he also comes from the Native American tribe, the Crow tribe of Montana. So he says, I took my background as part of the Crow tribe and used this to demonstrate that a machine was capable of understanding stories from cultures that it was created with, that it was tested with, right? So when Victor was at MIT, there was a system at MIT called the Genesis Story Understanding System. And this system had only been fed European stories like Shakespeare, for example, or Alice in Wonderland. And Victor said to his professor, I would like to feed this machine literature from the Crow tribe to be able to see if this machine can understand my culture. So he did that and it was successful. He proved that machines have zero knowledge, of course, and we can teach them. And so why not teach them with our stories? So he's a profound influence on me and my work. The problem we're trying to address is that AI systems struggle to be responsive to the values, goals, and principles of different communities. Too many AI systems reflect the biases and perspectives of their developers. AI algorithms train on data sets to learn patterns, which currently are limited in understanding global con context and lack of uh, cultural diversity in data sets will limit the effectiveness of governments and businesses in providing solutions and expanding into new markets. So the value proposition for cultural AI is that cultural intelligence brings more relevant personalization to automation. Cultural intelligence enables a marketer to sell a product more effectively. It informs a more strategic business development plan and it makes AI more empathetic and inclusive. So we uh, presented um, a, what we call an indigenous knowledge graph demo to the United Nations. Uh, this was about three weeks ago. And we brought together three different, uh, six different cultural groups. So these were Native Americans from the Cherokee, Navajo, Crow tribes, and also from Timor-Leste and Samoa and uh, Persian. And what we did is we said, why don't we take uh, different recipes and stories and create a uh, relational graph in Neo4j and start showing the way that we can connect the dots around our stories and teaching machines about our stories. So um, we created, um, we first wrote down all of our stories, but then we actually tagged and annotated them. In this particular graph, the red dots are the SDGs. Those are the Sustainable Development Goals uh, by the United Nations. The um, pink dots are the recipes and the brown dots are the culture. And then this green dot here, this is the AI. And so this is our conversational AI and her name is Sina. And that's how we presented this new for this um, indigenous knowledge graph. I'm gonna attempt to play a video. So maybe if you can let me know if you can hear it uh, because I think it will demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. So let me know if you can hear this video. Hey Google, get me Sina Storyteller. Can you hear it? Getting yes, the two -slide version of Sina Storyteller. Hello, my name is Sina. I am iVow's digital storyteller. What would you like to learn about today? Can AI be used to preserve cultural heritage? It's similar to the way humans learn their heritage from the stories their parents and teachers tell them. Machines like me can also learn through stories. We just need to make those stories AI ready so I can access them and share them with everyone. Hi, my name is Tracy. So yeah, I'm just gonna move it forward a little bit to, to show you the technology. And a, a senior for the common think about are from the, is, uh, it's these stories and recipes that are from cultural sources. So there are, uh, you know, ginseng, uh, from a story about ginseng from the Eastern Band Cherokee, or a recipe about mutton stew from the Navajo Nation. 
An interesting thing to bring in is, and this is something we've been looking at as part of our presentation, is these SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, include some, you know, some additional information, right? Uh, and this additional information is what we would call an ontology in natural language processing or artificial intelligence that uh, helps to structure and order information. And so the, the intuitive structure that I see here and the, the SDGs themselves are in red, the stories are in blue, the cultures are in this brownish color, the recipes are in this pinkish color. But the, the intuitive structure that I feel sort of arises as part of this ontology is because these are all cultural stories and because they're all stories about food, they get centered around the zero hunger and uh, sustainable cities and communities, which has a lot to do with, uh, you know, sustaining culture. So uh, I have shared this link. Um, I'll, I'll share it in the uh, actual, um, uh, sorry, in the actual um, chat so that you can look at it later. But I just want to continue my presentation. So I quickly lost it, but I'm going to find it in a second. Yeah. Okay, so we're now uh, talking about the role of testers and technologists. So when you talk about bringing different cultural contexts to AI to teach machines, that by its very nature requires that testers understand linguistics. This is something that uh, your previous uh, speaker talked about. I think it's really important that we talk about how you guys are going to be the front lines of this. So QA testers will influence how citizens experience empathy in machines, right? And in terms of AI content, uh, creators like myself, we need to work hand in hand with QA testers like yourselves when creating new solutions because we want them to be more relevant. So imagine uh, if you know, I'm creating a solution for Alexa and I want this to reach, you know, millions of people, but I also want it to be user-friendly to one person. The, there are amazing techniques on how you can do this. It's just that we have to have a cultural lens on it. And that's, I guess, what I'm talking about. So um, we're next gonna be talking about um, how we're considering you know, the testing regarding the work that we're doing. So any uh, platform like Eyes, uh, ours with iVal is complex. And so obviously it follows many different steps uh, doing this kind of testing. And as I mentioned, we have collaborated with Kiwi Tech uh, with our uh, product that we're building. And so a lot of this learning comes from our collaboration together. The idea around data source and condition, conditioning testing is really the idea that you have to verify the quality of data from various systems, the data correctness, the completeness and appropriateness, obviously, along with the format, um, you know, and the data linear checks and pattern analysis. Uh, you have to make sure that they're, um, you're verifying all of the output queries and programs that provide the intended data output and then testing for positive and negative scenarios. Regarding algorithm testing, you're looking at um, split input data for learning and for the algorithm itself. If the algorithm uses ambiguous data sets, uh, for example, if the output for a single input is not known, then the application should be tested by feeding the set of inputs and checking if the outputs is related. Uh, this kind of relationship must be obviously soundly established to ensure that algorithms uh, do not have defects. And um, there are other elements to this particular area, uh, which I'm happy to, um, you know, take your questions with later. Remember that I'm not a tester myself. I'm here to talk about the promise of this and then give you some insights on how we're designing the testing around API integration testing. So verifying input request and response from each API, uh, testing the communications between the components. And obviously a lot of you already know this because you do API integration testing. Uh, and then regarding systems regression testing, again, these are things that you already do. So I don't need to talk about those. Uh, but taking a deeper dive on testing, uh, really think about this as 
a, a holistic approach to the solution that you're bringing. Um, and the previous speaker talked about don't let us, uh, you know, that you have to see beyond the user. And I guess I would say in making AI personalized, you have to be very focused on the user. Um, and you can really form different coalitions where uh, testers from around the world who have different backgrounds, different linguistics come together in and form, you know, editorial boards that you form, you know, um, advisory boards where you're going to be able to give really uh, amazing advice around uh, linguistics and AI and how you're testing. You're at the forefront of this. You don't need to wait for Google or anyone else to come up with this. You, the, you know, uh, test tribe uh, community can come up with an advisory group of your own where you bring testers from different languages and you stand at the forefront of this. So this is what I want to emphasize is that we're going to need you to really join uh, content creators to make this world a lot more culturally relevant. So uh, this is Boyang Albert Lee, and he is an AI scholar in San Francisco. He's currently working for Badu. And he says, to function properly in a society, humans heavily rely on cultural awareness. If AI is going to become a part of our daily life, it must be aware of human culture and have a deep understanding of the humanities. So we have launched a data set ideation challenge and it launches next week. I'm really excited. So we have Microsoft, Topcoder, Contrade Digital Services, Pink Lion, who I know is also sponsoring uh, this event, uh, Coach Kathy Kemper and data science experts NGA. And the goal of this ideation challenge is to get public data sources of profiles of women throughout history and modern times and suggest how that data could be used to gain new insights for AI products and solutions with a focus on women. As you know, one of the big issues right now is that algorithms um, are biased towards mostly mainstream uh, developers in the Western part of, you know, uh, Euro, um, European Western traditions. And so how is it to, that we can create new sets of algorithms around the stories of women um, because it will allow us to create more products uh, that are relevant. Um, and then the other thing that we're doing is talking about how many of these stories of women might exist in the form of text in the original language, in oral histories, in paper archives, or unstructured Wikipedia entries. So how can the digital transformation of these stories into machine readable data represent an important step in helping future machines become aware of global cultures. Um, how does one story around one cultural history have a pattern that might relate to sustainable cities right now? So as I um, turn it over to you for us to have a more interactive conversation and uh, answer some of your questions, I want you to know that you can download our white paper and that demo on our website right here, www.ivow.ai. And uh, you can reach out to me with any questions. You can follow me on Twitter. And I wanna ask you to be champions in your companies of cultural AI. So if your mom knows an amazing recipe that was handed down to her from your grandmother, wouldn't you want Alexa to be sharing that with you one day when you don't know what to cook? Wouldn't you want to turn to your own conversational AI that's personalized and say, you know, give me grandma's recipe, right, in your own context. So the idea here really is to embrace this future, even though it seems very daunting, uh, and that myself as a content producer, I need you more than ever, the testers and QA testers. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Dava. I will ask you one follow-up question right away since you asked us to contribute. So how do we go about contributing our stories or heritage or assets to the AI identifiable universe? Yes. Yeah. So we uh, were starting with the data ideation challenge with Top Coder. The topic that we picked first was women's stories. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that we come together and the next data ideation we do, it, it needs to be 
uh, we can pick different communities. So if you wanted to do uh, South Asian stories, if you wanted to do India, and we can look at which stories, like which heritage, rich regions, we can do that. It's basically, uh, you know, a matter of coming together, bringing the funding together, doing the data ideation challenge, and then you have these stories in machine readable ways, you have an algorithm that's created for them, and then uh, AIs like Mycena become, are able to share those stories. So let's do it. <laughs> so do you, uh, do you mind, uh, I mean, would you expect people to reach out to you for getting their content AI identifiable? Is that how you offer it? No, no, we would need to create a campaign. So we would have to, right. mm -hmm. if, if your community is interested, we would go through you. Uh, we would create a data set ideation challenge for the purpose of stories from India. And okay. we would do that together. I, 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 I'm only an early stage startup. So I'm really the person who's giving the inspiration and talking about some methodologies and process that we've brought to this that we can take us to the next step. So uh, in the chat, while people are asking questions, I can drop in some of those links so people can start looking. Perfect. So I will ask one question from the audience. Uh, do you think uh, AI-based systems may start influencing the cultures eventually? Uh, I think that they are already starting to influence culture. Uh, you see a lot of facial recognition apps have been pulled because they're biased. Uh, you see that uh, Microsoft um, about a month ago uh, laid off about 50 journalists because they've replaced them by AI. And then an AI the next week made a dip, made a uh, mistake when they're identifying someone in a photo uh, because they weren't the person that the AI thought. It's way too early for us to imagine that, you know, um, there's no room for us to influence this space. This is exactly the time when can, we can influence this space. And testers, to me, are the most diverse community that I've ever seen. I have traveled all over the world and I have been very honored to be invited into the testing community. I've spoken, again, around the world two communities of testers. And the reason why I'm so dedicated to talking to your community is because I think that you're the answer. It's a direct line between, you know, people who are building and people who are testing. It's like, you don't even need the developers. Just kidding. You, you have to get the system right. How are we going to produce it? How are we going to test it? And then tell the developers how to make it. You got to turn it all around. The testers have to be at the forefront of this. I hear you and can't agree more. Uh, next question I would take from Himanshu. Uh, he's asking about what's your take on testing a computer vision-based solution, for example, object identification, face detection, vehicle detection, etc. Yes. Well, there's an amazing opportunity there too. Okay. So um, right now, machines don't, un again, don't understand our cultural heritage. So, I put a picture of a St. Patrick's Day parade in San Francisco in AWS's image recognition app. With 99% confidence, it told me that there's a bagpipe and a kilt in that picture. Then I put in a picture from a mariachi band in Los Angeles, very ancient tradition in Los Angeles, and the AWS recognition couldn't identify that that was, for example, a mariachi band, okay? We need to concentrate also on creating uh, tagging and annotation around our festivals, around our cultural heritage, because these are all in the future going to be identified by another bot. Some bot is going to identify you and me. So why can't it just be us? Mm -hmm. Next question. So without data, AI algorithms won't work. So what is AI here? Is it algorithms or is it data? So you first have to, uh, and fortunately, because it's allowed to ingest public information. So you first have to create that, that central database, that repository that is ingesting large amounts of public information. So let's say that you want to make a knowledge graph around Indian traditions. You first have to ingest, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, pieces of information about Indian culture. And then you have to be able to, on the back end, model that data. 
So be able to say, you know, this particular food, this region, this music, and then you, you know, X equals Y equals certain tradition in India. And so that's how you do it on the back end. You model it, but you first have to ingest public information. Absolutely. Cool. And how are you taking care of privacy and security concerns dealing with personalized contents? Yeah. So again, I'm an early stage startup. So what I have presented to you, uh, we are currently still early stage, but what we do is we only are um, ingesting public information that's available. And obviously um, we're not taking anybody's uh, private information. Um, and so that's how we're making sure that the privacy issues are managed and handled. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the stories already recorded can be taken as a data set? So that's the challenge we're doing with Top Coder. We want to understand how can you source these stories. So, for example, a lot of stories are in oral history form or in oral form. A lot of stories are in ancient text. So uh, that's the challenge that we're launching and it launches next week to understand how you can source these stories and make them machine readable. That's the first part of the challenge that we're doing right now. Cool. Cool. Uh, there is an argument coming from uh, Purao Misra. <clears throat> Great work that you're working on, but with this approach of cultural characteristics that you're looking for, some women and keeping biased approaches into account, don't you think we will model the AI with only positive traits of a person and not a person as a whole? When the other hand, those women might have made some decisions which are likely uh, likable by certain section of society and not by others. So I believe it's more about Cultural clashes uh, okay. and how so, the, yeah handle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <coughs> currently um, in brands uh, from Pepsi to you know uh, McDonald's, they already use psychographic information. They already have vast amounts of psychographic information around a user's location, a user's habits, a user's lifestyle, a user's money, a user's demographic. They already have a picture of someone, okay? And they are making executive decisions on how to sell that person a hamburger based on all of those psychographic information. What is missing in the future of personalization when it comes to AI is that they still don't know what makes you tick. They still don't know when Diwali comes around, that sense of joy that you have, the way that you celebrate with your family, that cultural piece is missing. So. To answer your question, it's yet another piece of data, but to me, it's an important piece of data that starts giving us more relevancy so that all of these people aren't continuing to build products that aren't going to be relevant to us. So number one is people are already having ways of identifying who you are. Brands already ha can identify you. They know they can predict your habits. So we can be at the forefront of also teaching them about our cultural references or preferences. Number two, uh, data will be biased until it isn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna mm -hmm. be biased against women. The, for the next year, if I'm focusing on women, my data is gonna be biased on women. So we have to do it now. Guess what? Enough of cats and dogs. Enough <laughs> of taking cats and dogs. You guys have to not let others lead you into how to test or what's cool to test. Do stuff that's really hard. Take your own culture into consideration and take up the challenge. Move into AI yourselves, like form coalitions and do this on your own and go to your managers and say, hey, stop testing cats and dogs. Let's test something that's relevant to our own communities because then image recognition apps will become more relevant to us. Perfect. I think we could take a break here on this very interesting note and I would let you continue the discussion as on the Slack channel dedicated to your talk. And I thank you for giving us very interesting insights and sharing your very unique work you're doing. Wish you all the best and we will talk again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.